very large tornado. Houses are okay, sheds are not. Water damage on US 169, tornado cross 169. Yeah, yeah. Tornado on the ground, still tornado on the ground. A oh, power flash. Power flash. Power flash is in Tama. Tama is getting hit right now. In theory, we'll have internet. No idea this will work wherever it is that we're going. The March 5th, 2022 tornado event in Iowa. Originally, it was going to be a test of Starlink, my SpaceX internet service, to see if I could actually use it while storm chasing. Unfortunately, we never got the chance because storms formed a little bit earlier than we expected, and we really never had a moment to stop. Strong low-level wind fields and 200 to 300 meters squared per second squared of effective SRH favor, prove favorable for updraft rotation and at least set a few tornadoes if you're possible. With any storm that remain at least semi-discreet. Scattered damaging wind gusts should also occur as convection attempts to grow upscale later this afternoon, early evening while moving quickly eastward across Iowa and northern Missouri. A watch will likely be needed within the next couple of hours as the severe threat gradually increases. That was a pretty good MD. Severe weather may not be imminent. Persons should remain alert for rapidly changing weather conditions and listen for later statements and possible warnings. Stay tuned to NOAA weather radio, commercial radio and television outlets, or internet sources for the latest severe weather information. A severe thunderstorm warning has been issued until 3.15 p.m. for the following counties in Iowa, Fremont, Mills, Montgomery, Page, and Pottawatomie. Storms began forming and there were initially about three different targets with three different supercells that were forming. The first that went severe worn, we were in a spot to watch it come in. Whoa. The storms we were watching looked fine, but they were having a hard time really growing any type of low-level circulation. But then we started watching more storms form in the open warm sector, and we knew that was likely going to be the play of the day. The storm forming off to our east near Corning was going to be the storm of the day we could already tell. We had to wait for it to cross Highway 34 before we can get back on the good visual side of things to actually see what was going on. One disturbing thing happening on the radar view was a bounded weak echo region forming with a very intense couplet as well. We knew this thing was about to produce. We're 15. Come on, come on. Nick, tornado. What? We got a tornado here on the right. Where? 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 I'm like 100% convinced. Is that is that a funnel down there? Or am I crazy? I Just can't. to the south of the highway. Once we get up the, on this hill, I think we might have a good visual. The wispy funnel did make contact with the ground, therefore becoming a tornado, but given the radar representation, we knew the storm would likely continue to produce tornadoes, potentially stronger tornadoes, and visually a much stronger RFD cut was wrapping around the mess of cyclone, a big indication that this storm was likely going to get even stronger. Hey, 
Just south of Winterset, the tornado was now large and violent, and it was passing just off toward north and east, unbeknownst to us. We were able to see it in the video after the fact. However, very low visibility on our side of the storm made it impossible to see. The only way we really knew it was there was based on the damage it produced right after we came behind it. There's, there's your RFD cut wrapping back in, so it's gotta be just to the right of the road. That's a big RFD cut happening again. New tornado warning. Copy. Some logs in the road. The tornado just come through here. Yeah, tree damage. House damage. damage. House, House damage. damage. A lot of damage on US 169. Tornado cross 169. We took a bypass around Winterset and we only saw minor damage. We thought the town was mostly spared as it was mainly to barns and power poles and trees. Unfortunately, we would find out way later the devastation that was actually unfolding in Winterset, unknown to us at the time, unfortunately killing many people. Some damage east of Winterset. Some damage here. East of Winterset, the houses looked mainly intact, just mainly damaged to garages and sheds. Emergency responders already on scene and tending to those that needed it. Why are we like they're okay? Everyone's okay there. House looks pretty okay. So we figured, well, let's keep going east to try and provide reports on the storm as we continue to race the debris. Got debris in the roadway here. Oh, oh my God. There were no structures immediately off to our west, so we aren't really sure where this debris originated from, but we did know that the tornado was still on the ground and also now marching closer and closer to my viewing area in eastern Iowa. Every time we crossed where that circulation was, there was damage. This was clearly a long track tornado getting closer and closer to eastern Iowa. Oh, trees, tree damage. Oh, yeah, okay, we got some trees here down. Powerful bend. House looks okay. Barn is fast is okay. Oh, God. Yeah, all the debris in the. Oh, man. House looked okay, though. Yes. Very large tornado. Houses are okay, sheds are not. This is, what street is that? I got, South, I got the crossroads. Okay. 44th, uh, South 44th Avenue, 117. A lot of barn damage, houses still all look good. Houses all look fine. Once again, we crossed the tornado path, and at this point, we're pretty convinced it may have been on the ground the entire Hold time. On. Upwards of 50 miles we've now traveled since winter set continuing to produce damage every single time we cross the tornado couplet. Oh, lie down. To race towards us here in eastern Iowa. The weather first meteorologist Ted Stewart and Nathan Santa Domingo are in the road warrior tonight. We hope to talk to them later, but right now they are focused on staying with this fast-moving storm as it moves deep. We want to show you a picture of the wedge tornado that struck near the that was captured by Robert Riley from WHO. Unreal. We're learning right now that homes and trees just southwest of Winterset were damaged or destroyed by this tornado. Fortunately, so far, no reports of injuries. Um, no power line down here. It is strong north now, but yeah, for the most part, the down of the south, this one I think has produced a couple uh, within the past hour or so here. That one has had a history of, of a tornado. You can visit uh, if they have, because uh, they might have 
As we continue moving into Tama County, the tornado is likely still on the ground at this point. However, there was no clear funnel, at least as of now, but there was definitely swirls happening and we consistently were seeing damage. I mean, you can see the RFD cut still. A little bit later, the tornado finally produced a very large stovepipe tornado. Yeah, uh, tornado, tornado, tornado. tornado. Yeah, yeah, tornado on the ground, still tornado on the ground. So now we have southwest of Tuna. Uh, there is a tornado on the ground confirmed. We now have oh, power flash. Power flash. So this is going to kind of cycle in. Copy. Got it. Tornado is still on the ground. Uh, let's see here. Power flash is in Tama. Tama is getting hit right now. Damage County, I believe. Barn, wind, uh, Gordon, the uh, Gordon. Uh, you know, we could be talking about Keystone. We could be talking about I think that's Pirate might be RFD more than tornado. Hopefully, potentially, they continues to track that way. Yeah, it